guys, I sure come at you today with another champion guide in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. I'm glad to have you guys here. How you all doing? This has been a, a much delayed guide on Skull Crown. Really should be one of the first epics that we ever did a guide on here on the channel because she's that good, man. She is the quintessential Void Affinity Nuker. Before there was a Genbo, before there was a Magnar, she is the Void Epic Nuker that everybody wanted to get their hands on. There's still very, very justifiable and valid reasons to wanting to get your hands on this champion because she's She's still got it, and I'm going to share two different builds in today's video, depending on how and where you want to use this champion. So, Marco, some shout-outs here. Time for a Skull Crown Guide. Ash, asking you shall receive. Aaron, thanks so much for these. Ash, you're my go-to for building champions. I'm still waiting on Skull Crown. I, I put the pieces together there. I'm not that dumb. Justine, Skull Crown next, please. I'm not sure when you left that, but Skull Crown eventually, right? We get Trent asking for Ragash and Skull Crown. We made Ragash happen a couple days ago. Trent asking for Ragash and Skull, uh, Skull Crown. Justine, more Skull Crown. And Trent, more Skull Crown. Linus, Skull Crown. And Justine again. Justine and Trent going to be your lucky day because we got Skull Crown today. So we're on the mini account right now. Boy, I have a lot of new champions too, don't I? Jeez. Most of them are going to be all epics and rares, but cool. Uh, anyway, Skull Crown, what does she do? Nice Revenant, epic, uh, epic champion. She's so cool. First of all, look at that headpiece, man. Look at that headpiece that Skull Crown has going on. She really does have the Skull Crown. It's all in the name, man. She is a companion champion. No lore, unfortunately, in game, but she's the companion champion to Sinesha. Talk about that in just a moment. We look at her skills. Actually, let's look at her skills right now, right? Uh, attack all enemies. So we have an AoE on the A1. Place an extra hit if there's more than 50% HP on the champion after the first hit. So that means we want her to go early in the rotation, especially if we have two kind of damage dealers or nukers on the team, specifically for blender comps in the arena, which I will show you guys today. On the A2, Corrupting Touch, an even harder hitting AoE attack on her A2. So we have the AoE on the A1, we got the AoE on the A2. Those are her only two active skills. Uh, attack all enemies has a 75% chance on a three turn cooldown of putting the big version of Weaken, which gives you a reason to build this champion with a little bit of accuracy as well if you're lacking a weakened debuff on your team already on the passive number one resilient places an unkillable buff in this champion for one turn every time their hp drops below 20 percent this ability is tremendous especially in the arena but really anywhere anywhere that you want to preempt a fatal hit you got it right there it's great because if you don't go first in the arena she can still take a hit or two or three or four or five she's unkillable and then get around to her next Next turn hopefully she aoe's and they're all dead right it's happened to me before it's probably happened to you guys too where she's the only one left alive she's got the unkillable and then boom she goes in with the corrupting touch or the way of souls kills everybody from beyond revives this champion with 30 percent hp that's on a six turn cooldown only available when senesha is on the same team it is noteworthy here actually uh, speed and arena battles by 23 percent makes her a great uh, arena speed lead before you get your hands on arbiter okay Worth noting here, two things. Number one is her base attack is really high for an epic. 1509, we love to see that. On Sinesha, Sinesha has no special abilities if Skull Crown's on the same team, so it's kind of a one-way companion advantage. It's a one-way relationship these sisters have. That's not cool. They do both have the cool Skull Crown, or no skull, but the, the headpiece, I guess, right? And Sinesha has the opposite of Skull Crown on her A1. She places an extra hit if the enemies have less than 50% HP. So it's nice that they kind of complement each other in that way as well. So guys, I'm going to show you the build number one. Oh man, look at this, a flash offer, a hundred bucks. No, thank you. No, thank you. All right. I'm going to show you the build for an arena comp first, and then I want to show you the control build on my main account, okay? So this is her on my arena comp. Now you can see not fully maxed, but we're getting there in terms of her artifacts and accessories. We still need to max her, uh, her banner, which is attack, uh, her ring, which is attack. 
We'll crit damage, obviously, on the amulet. And we, need to, we do need to, excuse me, max out her helmet as well. We got a trip crit rate roll. Really juicy there. Now, we have her in a nuker build, so we have her in savage set. This would be good for the arena. Savage or lethal or cruel gear it works as well, okay? We do have crit damage, albeit a four-star. No big deal. Uh, but we got a four-star crit damage on the gauntlets, uh, attack percentage on the chest, and speed on the boots. Uh, we're not too concerned with her level of uh, accuracy here because, again, we're not really counting on her to uh, land that weekend. If all goes according to plan, they're going to be dead after her nuke anyway. We don't need that weekend to set things up, okay? Uh, we do have, but it's a nice to have. We could put accuracy on that banner if we wanted to, uh, and, you know, it won't work in a blender comp because it's on her A2, so we're not going to be setting the table, so to speak, with that weekend. That's on her A2 ability, and we're going to be going in with the A1 on a blender, uh, but if you're just using her as a regular arena nuker, you could definitely get by with not going attack on the banner and then going accuracy instead and then having that weekend, especially if you have another nuker going after her. So 100% crit rate is going to be mandatory on this champion. We don't want her landing any uh, any non-critical hits. She's void affinity, so no weak affinity matchups to deal with. No weak hits uh, concerns with this champion, provided that she's built to 100% crit rate. We do have uh, as much crit damage as we can get, much uh, as much attack, excuse me, as we can get as well. Now on a blender comp. You don't have to go speed on the boots. You can go attack percentage. Problem is, is I don't have enough savage gear on this account. I need to use the speed boots. So it's totally fine. If you have speed boots on a blender comp, you're going to be going back around to get her first turn after her blender, after her A1, uh, sooner. So it's not the end of the world to have speed, but you can min-max her damage by putting attack percentage because all we need is our ally attacker to go fast on a blender comp. doesn't matter how fast she is because, again, if everything goes according to plan, they're all going to be dead before she takes a turn anyway, okay? More on that in just a moment. I'll show you, especially if you're unfamiliar with the blender comp team, I'm going to have a whole video guide on this team on my main channel in a couple days, so check that out as well. Anyway, mastery's on this champion. I do have her all masteried out. And all booked out as well. But I will say, you can get by without booking this champion. Especially if you're using her in the arena. You have two strong AoE nukes. You know, booking this out to get a hundred to get a 75% weekend, not mandatory to get this down to a three-turn cooldown, not mandatory either. So this is definitely a champion that is, I think, worth booking for the extra damage, uh, for the cooldown, for the extra damage on the A1, but certainly not necessary, okay? I would make her probably, you know, in a later priority. I would prioritize your support epic champions before a skull crown. I'll be very clear on that. Mastery, she does benefit from quite a bit. Obviously, the offense works, but really quickly on the defense side of things. We came down, we picked up Retribution. Both Retribution and Deterrence uh, are both great options. Retribution, most importantly. We want a counterattack because she has that strong AoE on her A1. So Retribution for me, Defense Tree is pretty mandatory for this champion. I want to get defense tree just to get that retribution. Hey, improved parry helps out too. It mitigates critical hit damage by 8%. That's a really nice damage mitigation, especially for the arena where you have to be worried about those critical hits, right? For PvE, if you're using her in a stun build, which we'll talk about in a little bit here, uh, I would go tough skin and probably blast proof instead. Normally, I go Blast Proof on primarily uh, PvE champions, and I go Improved Parry on primarily primarily Arena champions. Uh, so on the offensive side of things, guys, you guys can see, we went with a very, very typical, you guys already know probably if you watch any guides on my main channel or this channel, this is my favorite build for Arena Nukers. Uh, you know, it, just to pick out all the masteries here, Crit Rate, Crit Damage, Shield Breaker to do more damage on targets under Shield, Ruthless Ambush for the first hit. That's going to be very important. 8%. Probably my favorite mastery for Arena Nukers. Uh, you can go Opportunist if you're setting them up with a Stun, Sleep, Fear, uh, fear True Fear, Petrification, etc. Uh, or you can go with Cycle of Violence if you're not. Uh, in this case, we're not going to be setting her up with any of those debuffs, so I went Cycle of Violence. Bring it down is important. Damage increases by 6% when attacking targets with higher max HP, which is pretty much always going to be the case. So another 6% damage boost. And then, of course, Helm Smasher. So those are the most important masteries to have. So Helm Smasher plus Savage gives us a chance to ignore 50% of target's defense. Uh, guys, let's go ahead and give her... Oh, actually, Blessings. Uh, I would definitely go with uh, a Crushing Rend or Cruelty. 
I would go with Crushing Red. Sorry, talking this out right now. <laughs> I would go with Crushing Rend on this champion. I think that's definitely going to be the way to go. The first hit is going to ignore percentage of defense. Uh, it's a really strong mastery to have, especially on your Arena Nuker. It's really strong in PvE as well. Uh, I guess the third option might be Phantom Touch for that extra damage and an extra hit potentially on A1, uh, even though you're really not going to be using Skull Crown and Fire Knight. Speaking of where you're going to be using this champion, let's go to hellhades.com here really quickly to look at these multipliers. You can see where he ranks her. Ice Golem a 4.5, Dragon a 4.5, Doom Tower a 4, Doom Tower Waves and this next build that I show you is she's incredible, right? Dark Fae, uh, as well. Multipliers go to 1.8 godlike damage rating on the A1. Keep in mind we have a two shots on that A1, provided they have more than 50% HP after the first attack. And then a 4.3 godlike rating on that A2. It's a very, very good multiplier, especially for an epic champion. So uh definitely still got it. Got a skull crown, meaning that she's an old school champion in the game that still has a ton of uh, viability inside the game. So I'm going to show you my strategy for the arena, guys. It's basic. I have an ally attacker, level 50, Farrakhan in the Fat. He has increased crit damage, increased crit rate, and an ally attack. We're going to go in here with Skull Crown Sinesha. Again, we do want Skull Crown in the lead. A, because she has speed in arena battles. And B, for the aura. And B, because we want her to take, get that double hit on the A1. So we don't want anybody going before her. We come in here. Boom, 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 boom. Everybody just... Just keeps attacking, keeps doing a lot of damage, right? Now, ideally, we kill them all on the very first shot, but I think we're going to be okay here, right? I think we're going to be okay. Even though Mortimer Cop kills our poor Ferric in the fat. But that's the beauty of the Blender Comp, guys. It goes super, super fast. It's the best arena or great hall farming strategy in the game. Again, we have one champion who's fast, Farrakhan in the Fat in this case, with an ally attack. Everybody else is slow, but everybody else, Deliana and Sinesha, have AoEs on their A1 as well. They all go in in everybody's freaking toast. All those AoEs come down. We get Retribution proc there as well. Come back in. Okay. Two more to go. Get rid of Deke. Get rid of Valkyrie. But again, I have a full video coming on this strategy, guys. That's it. I mean, this is my favorite nuke build for Skull Crown. This is where I would use her. This is what I would use in dungeons for damage as well. Same build, really, guys. Uh, let me go to the main account really quickly and show you a control build for Skull Crown. Be right back. All right, guys, we are on the main account. Let me show you my, uh, my main account Skull Crown here. So here she is. She does have, as I mentioned, Crushing Rend as her blessing. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what I have her on. Stun set, of course. I mean, it's obvious, but she has an AoE on the A1, an AoE on the A2, and that's all she's got in terms of active skills. So every shot has an 18% chance of landing a stun. Keep in mind that stun sets, landing that stun, just like Toxic and Provoke and everything else, it's not predicated on having any accuracy. There's no accuracy to resistance check. So the opponent could be a Mithrala with... 1,000 uh, resistance, and we're still going to have an 18% chance of landing a stun, regardless of what their resistance is, regardless of what our accuracy is. So a stun set is an obvious choice for this champion as well. I still have her built out to do some damage, 105 and 226 on the crit rate, crit damage. I would like to have her a little bit faster, but you know we work with what we have in terms of extra accessories. You can see, see that I have a, or, or artifacts that is, you can see I have a Savage Gauntlets and Savage Boots. It's remnants of my old build i used to use her in the arena here so ideally we probably have speed uh or perception on uh the boots and the gauntlets uh so it's not perfectly you know in terms of the artifact set but you guys get the point stun set okay it makes perfect sense now in terms of masteries we're, we're kind of building a hybrid build here right so we can still use her for damage. We can still go with the Helm Smasher. Everything's exactly the same on the offensive tree. I don't need to move out of the way. Everything's exactly the same on the, the, the entirety of the masteries here. However, I will say two important things. If we really want to get all the value that we can extract from a stun set and a control build from this champion, we want to make two changes to the masteries. Change number one is getting rid of Helm Smasher. Change number two is getting rid of Kill Streak. Helm Smasher, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Change number one, Helm Smasher. Change number two is Cycle of Violence, okay? For Helm Smasher, we're going to switch that in for Fearsome Presence. That's going to take that stun from an 18 to a 23% chance on both of her hits, on her A1 and her A2. 
uh, now on for a cycle of violence, we're going to replace that with Harvest Despair because we want a 60% chance of Leech every time that we place a stun vis-a-vis -vis the stun set, okay? And again, that Leech is not re going to require any accuracy at all to land as well from Masteries uh, and from, uh, from Artifacts. Don't need the accuracy. So this is the control build. Let me take you into a Doom Tower. Uh, I think there's a Doom Tower Epic only or something like that. Uh, attack Champions only. Get out of the Forge. What is going on? Man, I'm getting a little lag, as you guys can tell. And uh, my whole game's getting messed up here. Next thing you know, I'm in the Forge. Next thing you know, I'm on hellhades.com. Okay. I think it's Secret Room, what, three maybe? All right, guys, it was Secret Room 2, Doom Tower, Hard Track. Uh, rank 6 Attack Champions only. I'm going to challenge myself and use an all-out control team. I don't even need Thylesia. I want to use, like, an Ashwalker. Would be even better. Uh, all rares in Skull Crown, okay? So with a strategy like this, with a team like this, everybody's in a stun set, right? Uh, that's the whole idea. And what we want to do is is really, you know, you can use this strategy not just in Doom Tower uh, waves, right? Or, you know, in secret rooms, rather. But we can use it on Doom Tower floors, right? Especially if we don't have... Uh, you know, a bunch of OP champions like Seer, for example. If you're not using a Seer activation team, this is a great strategy to go ahead and employ, right? Uh, so just use a bunch of AoE nukers. And with, with Aethyl, by the way, if you're using this strategy, make sure you're opening with the A2, then you're using the A3. That way you can reduce the cooldown. We don't want to self-buff ahead of time. We want to do it afterwards to reduce the cooldown on the AoE. Uh, but anyway, this is the strat, right? Now, the cool thing is she's going to die to that bomb on her next turn, but she's not going to die because she's unkillable. You got some bomb res... Uh-oh. Ashwalker's going to die, though. That stinks. All right, that was a counterattack retribution proc there. That was nice. So can we do this without my man Ashwalker? She stays alive because of the unkillable, thank God. But now we have our work cut out for us here. We really need to get some stuns landed, and we're not getting very lucky here on the RNG. Okay, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Kurzad's like, I got this, man. I got it on lockdown. I'm going to stun everybody right now. All right, let's go in here. We always want to work on the champion, a Boro in this case, that does not have uh, the lowest turn meter essentially left, or the highest turn meter, excuse me, is who we want to work on. We don't want to target the stun champions. We want to target the champions without stun and the higher turn meter. So let's come in again with the A3. Let's come in with the A2. Okay, a Boro down. Fantastic. We'll do one more AoE, and now we can shift to just A1 cycling here. Lay off my Skull Crown. She's the, uh, you know, the star of the show here, fat man. Don't ruin it for me. Okay. So things are looking pretty good, even without our guy. Hopefully all the AoEs are off cooldown, or at least one on every champion. Okay, two stuns. I'll take it. Going to self-buff, take that extra turn, come in with the A2, land another stun. I will take it again. Here we go. Let's land another one. Let's land another one here. Okay, that's a lot of damage at least, right? Nice to have that big nuke coming from her as well. Again, we want two stuns here. We don't get any. That's a bummer. Let's go in the back. Highest turn meter. And lay bare. Ouch, Shinaru, you son of a jackal. All right, it's okay. She's still alive. She's still got her unkillable. Man, the unkillable is so clutch. Not just for Arena, but as you can see in other areas of the game as well. Uh, also, if you proc a Retribution on an enemy and she has her unkillable, it, it just went up, it will stay up for that counterattack and then it will go away. So hopefully we can keep her alive here. Shazar and Mashald. Skull Crown down. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Oh, no. No. Oh, we got nothing here, guys. We got nothing. Oh, it's so close at the end. Let's try it again. Let's see if my man Ashwalker can stay alive this time. I'll come back to you guys. Well, actually, I'll, I'll stay with you. Who cares, right? Thank you guys for supporting the uh, sponsor aura of this channel. 
uh, all your your all in one service for uh, financial security, online security, VPN, anti malware, anti data brokerage, everything. Check it out. 14 day free trial. It's easy to cancel. If you're not a fan, uh, the link is in the description below. And I just want to thank you guys. I know you've been letting me know in the comments if you're trying it out, if you're signing it up. It does mean a lot to me. It helps me uh, keep this channel going, honestly, guys. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So here we go. We want an A1 cycle at the end, have our AoEs all ready to go. Obviously, it doesn't apply to Skull Crown, but this is a bad situation here, right? We do not want Elhain going in with her A1 to start things out. Uh, let's go AoE here on Ash Walker. Let's go Divine Blades on Aethel. Let's go A3. Okay, now we're cooking. Everybody's stunned. Perfect. Now we can come in. Another AoE. Now we can stun the Fat Man. Didn't work out, but it's okay. Take the extra turn, go in the A1. Go for the highest turn meter again. Come in AoE again. Hopefully land a couple stuns. We don't. Big nuke from Skull Crown. Uh, let's do one more Valley of Death. And now let's. it's time to A1 here. Time to A1. Make sure we're hitting the highest turn meters. And perfection. One more. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go a full auto. And hope for the best here. Getting some nice... Look at that. Look at that. Everybody's stunned. We love it. Now we got it. We got it in the bag this time. A little bit of RNG. You're not going to land every stun. You got an 18 or 23% chance. But this is the type of strategy that I would employ again for Doom Tower waves, especially. Skull Crown's great at it. Guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this guide on uh, Skull Crown. One of the best epic nukers out there in the game, both for the arena and a lot of versatility that we spoke about, even outside of just the nuke, just the damage on this champion. Keep the champion requests coming, guys. I appreciate you, and as always, take care, guys.